Uh, and Alex, I've, I kind of want to throw this question back to you because I've seen you talk a lot against staking and you've been very vocal against uh, whether that's Ethereum or other altcoins trying to emulate mining through this staking process. I just want to get your thoughts on why that's fair or unfair uh, and then as that pertains to Bitcoin mining itself. Yeah, I think it, it comes from a place of wanting people to question um, what's, what, what they're being told. Um and realizing that like proof of stake essentially is the existing system um and you know maybe it's different in a, it's slightly different obviously than uh, a central bank um and the way that the business community interacts with the central bank the way that commercial banks interact with central banks like okay so the money creation is going to be slightly different in a proof of stake blockchain but the incentive structure is pretty similar and the way it can be captured is pretty similar and the way it can be corrupted is pretty similar. And I think people should know that there is a way out, like that there, there, there is a way to issue money um, that is not uh, susceptible uh, to this sort of cancel on effect. And that is that is proof of work. And that um, <clears throat> ultimately uh, is not all that you need, obviously. And proof of work was invented in the 90s, you know, by bunch of people including adam back you know for different things it, it had it has to be placed in an elegant system um, of user control to actually kind of really tick um and because bitcoin has this full node architecture that allows users to control which blocks are valid and which software they want to run it, it creates this super powerful effect of um money issuance that's predetermined and can't be changed uh, and that is sort of a level playing field. I mean, yeah, it does not is it, it does not address the fact that if you're super rich, you can buy a lot of Bitcoin, of course. But that person can't then like prevent you and I from transacting, or can't prevent like some refugee from from accessing the network. And there's no special rules for that person, um, unlike in proof of stake systems, where like someone who's super rich or close to the creator uh, can have more influence over the modification of the protocol, for example, like that's how it would be in like a system like Ethereum, for example. So um, uh, we, we, I think it's incumbent upon us to, to help people learn about this difference. So fundamental. Um, I, I, it's not to say that there won't be tremendous wealth created and good things done with fiat systems. I mean, we're all products of it, you know, like, like some of us are doing good things. Others of us are not. Amazing things have been created. Amazing things have been destroyed. Um, there's the full spectrum of human reality and existence in the last 50 years in the fiat world, right? Um, and similarly in the digital space, like you're going to have, uh, I am sure, um, towering wealth created and all new um, systems create. You're already seeing this now, obviously, with these different proof of stake systems. Um, but at the end of the day, the, similar injustices still exist in these systems um as to the ex as to the current legacy financial system and i think that that's something that proof of work addresses um that's one part of it the other part of it is just that i think that geopolitically proof of work um you know helps create a system that's actually censorship resistant due to the rivalrous nature of the world and that like over time governments and corporations are all going to want to mine bitcoin you're going to have a situation where um if you know one party wants to censor your transactions it doesn't matter because someone else will accept it um you you don't have like a, a homogenous uh global uh society or government there's always going to be competition and and rebels um and even if 140 countries agree to ban Bitcoin mining. <laughs> the other 40 are going to be like, come on over here. You know, we'd love to work with you. So um, th there's there's that. Um, and then and then there's the, the broader piece, which I really believe in as well, which is that I think that it changes humans' relationship with energy. Um, and that, like, I think it could push us to a world that's um, less kind of oil uh, centric and that that to me is important for human rights reasons like i think a lot of these dictators um and a lot of the ways that the fiat money works is is related actually to energy and oil and um in a way that's i think a little unhealthy 
and I, I, I think we're still going to have this very important relationship to, to, to energy, um, but I think it'll be a little bit different uh, with proof of work as opposed to um, with the way that currently the reserve currency of the world is issued uh, ad infinitum, um, at least up until the, the, this sort of present moment, um, because other nations want to save in our debt. Like, and that was something that was like politically created um, in the 70s and um, has been pretty genius actually for, for several decades, but it's starting to come unraveling, right? And um, I think it's cool because proof of work allows us to envision a world reserve currency that doesn't have to run on packs with dictators um, and doesn't have to run on, you know, the fossil fuel industry being able to shut out its competition and attack nuclear and stuff like that. Um, I, I think it's it's really neat and it opens, opens up a lot of uh, possibilities. So I have a lot of different appreciations for proof of work, let's put it that way.